With in-your-face styling and a well-appointed interior, this latest generation Hyundai Sonata has more than proven itself capable of taking on the likes of the Toyota Camry as well as the Honda Accord. But now the folks at Hyundai have given the Sonata an injection of excitement with the all-new 2021 Hyundai Sonata Inline. So in today's video, we're going to go for a drive with the 2021 Hyundai Sonata Inline and see what it has to offer. Before we begin, we'd like to give a huge shout out to Stivers Hyundai in Columbia, South Carolina for letting us spend some time with this 2021 Hyundai Sonata Inline. Stivers Hyundai has a great selection of new and used vehicles, and they're also home to Genesis of Columbia, South Carolina. So if you're in the market for a new vehicle, be sure to check out the folks at Stivers Hyundai. Over the last decade, Hyundai has come a long way, and specifically over the last few years, they've drastically increased their quality and design. The company has also gone all in on adding performance-focused models to its lineup with the introduction of its in performance division. This latest generation Hyundai Sonata was introduced in 2020, and for the 2021 model year, the Sonata is getting the in treatment. Although it's worth noting, this isn't a Sonata in, but a Sonata in line. However, unlike other inline trims that receive predominantly aesthetic changes, the Sonata in line gets meaningful performance upgrades. The one we have here is a 2021 Hyundai Sonata inline. There are several different paint options available. Of the no-cost options, I like this car's Stormy Sea Blue. The Sonata inline shares its platform and engine with the Kia K5 GT, which in contrast is a full-on GT model versus the GT line trim in Kia's lineup. As is typical with inline vehicles, there are plenty of styling updates. The front end is more aggressive with the cascading style grille. This newest generation Sonata never suffered from a lack of styling, and I believe it does border on being overstyled. But with the addition of the blacked out wide grille and air intakes, all the creases and body lines seem to work better with this inline trim than they do with the rest of the lineup. The LED headlights remain the same, with the hidden LED running lights stretching into the chrome trim. The lower section of the grille has three openings for air and a larger opening at the bottom. The mesh is finished in gloss black. At each corner of the bumper are functional air curtains with V-shaped accents. The hood is long and slopes into the grille with more aggressive creases down the center. Viewing the Sonata inline from the side, you can get a good look at the 19-inch wheels with a unique design that includes machined and gray painted surfaces. They come wrapped in 245 40 tires. Hyundai does give you the option of upgrading to Grand Touring Summer Tires for $200 like the ones on our car. They're Continental Premium Contact 6s. The inline also receives larger brake discs front and rear for improved stopping power. The damping and other suspension components have also been tweaked to make the Sonata inline flatter in turns. Continuing down the side of the Sonata inline are more strong body lines found on this latest generation car. In addition, the inline adds a low aggressive side seal, gloss black mirrors, and an inline badge. The rear has a small gloss black spoiler that sits between the vortex generators on each corner. The tail flares out nicely, accenting the Sonata's fastback design. The rear receives full LED lighting with a light strip that stretches the entire length of the rear deck. This bumper is unique to the Sonata inline and includes a gloss black diffuser and a quad tip exhaust setup. I think the inline additions make this the best looking Sonata in the lineup. Getting into the Sonata inline can be done using the key you see here. Remote start is available and can be activated using the button on the key. You can also get into the Sonata using the button on the door handle. Oh. 
All right, hopping into the 2021 Hyundai Sonata inline, and this interior does a really good job at keeping its luxury features while also injecting a bit of sportiness. I really love the color of this interior, and these seats are really amazing. They have leather on the side, and then this soft, almost not quite Alcantara or suede type material on the inserts. And I love the feel and the thickness of this end steering wheel as well. And of course, there's red stitching throughout to add a bit of sportiness. As this inline in terms of pricing is pretty much at the top of the Sonata lineup, the fit and finish, of course, as is always with these vehicles, is really good. And I'm really happy to see that Hyundai didn't get rid of some of the luxury features that you would expect at this price point while still adding a nice sporty feel. The first thing you notice about the interior of the Sonata inline is that it is very gray. But I must admit, I quite like the way it looks. I find it to be unique and classy, and it doesn't come off as a cheap gray. Hyundai has done a good job of balancing the sporty aspects of this interior with some of the luxury features you would expect at this price point. The center dash is fitted with Hyundai's 10 and a quarter inch touchscreen. The screen looks great and is quick to react to touch inputs. Wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are also available. Sound comes from a 12 speaker Bose audio system, Below the screen are slim climate control vents and buttons for the automatic climate control. I appreciate Hyundai's use of physical buttons. Below the climate controls are connectivity ports as well as a wireless phone charging pad. Love it or hate it, Hyundai sticks with the push button transmission controls. In the inline, the transmission is an 8-speed dual clutch. There's two cup holders and additional storage in the center armrest and glove box. Behind the transmission controls is the drive mode switch. When you cycle through the different drive modes, a graphic on the center touchscreen shows you which drive mode you selected. Even more dynamic is the gauge cluster, which also changes depending on the drive mode you choose. It's a 12.3 inch fully digital setup and comes standard on the top three Sonata trims. I think it looks great and it even includes a menu that shows you the oil temp, torque production, and turbo boost pressure. But it would be nice in future examples if there were more customization, as the layout is the same regardless of what drive mode you choose. The steering wheel retains the unique four-spoke design. It's wrapped in high-quality leather with red stitching. Behind the steering wheel are paddle shifters. They feel nice in your hand and even have a little notch on them to indicate which paddle is for upshifts and which is for downshifts. The upshift paddle has a raised notch, and the downshift paddle has a dented notch. The seats look and feel great with good bolstering, red stitching, and leather and suede trim. On the back of each seat is an inline logo. The driver receives an 8-way power adjustable seat, while the passenger makes do with 4-way manual adjustments. Both front seats are heated, but if you want ventilation and power passenger seats, you need to select the limited trim. Standard on the inline is a large panoramic sunroof that lets in plenty of light. In the rear, the surfaces and materials are just as good as those up front. There are climate control vents and a USB port, and cup holders in the center armrest. The rear seats also receive leather and suede trim. Headroom is 40 inches up front, and there's 46.1 inches of legroom. In the rear, headroom is 38.4 inches, and legroom is 34.8 inches. And that's plenty of room to comfortably sit for adults. The trunk can be accessed using a button built into the deck lid. The Sonata inline has 16 cubic feet of trunk space, placing it between the Toyota Camry and Honda Accord. Underneath the floorboard is a spare tire. Of course, the main draw of the Sonata inline is the turbocharged engine, so let's press the button and start it up. In inline trim, the Sonata gets a 2.5-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder 
that makes 290 horsepower and 311 pound-feet of torque. Power flows through an 8-speed dual-clutch transmission. While driving the Sonata inline, I found that it had very sharp steering and outstanding balance through turns. Being front-wheel drive does limit the Sonata a bit dynamically, as it will understeer when pushed close to the limit, but those limits will never be found by most buyers. There's plenty of joy to be had with this chassis when you drive it within its boundaries. Alright, driving the Hyundai Sonata inline. And of course, the main thing about this car is the 2.5 liter turbocharged engine. So we're going to pop it into Sport Plus mode and see what she does. Oh yeah, that's plenty quick. And of course, this isn't a Ferrari at the end of the day, but the engine does suit this car pretty well. The turbocharged four-cylinder is the real star as it pulls the car hard. And if you ever find yourself trying to overtake someone on the freeway or getting off an exit ramp, the Sonata inline can do both of those things with ease. <laughs> yeah, and this dual clutch shifts pretty quick. Certainly not as quick as like the Hyundai Veloster N, but... Gets the job done, you know? And that's really all you want for something like this. The suspension is taut but not jarring and provides an excellent balance of low body roll and flat cornering performance with a smooth ride that can soak up imperfections in the road without any harsh feedback. I think Hyundai has done a fantastic job with this chassis and engine combination. Pure enthusiasts may note the lack of options such as a limited slip differential and a dynamic chassis, but again this is an inline trim and not a full on end model. In that regard, Hyundai has done more than necessary by not limiting the Sonata inline to aesthetic upgrades. Instead, there are some proper performance additions with this car. For those who aren't purebred racers and simply looking for an excellent family sedan, they will likely find very few faults with the Sonata inline. A few luxury features are missing that you can get with the limited trim, such as a heads up display, ventilated seats, a power passenger seat, and surround view monitor. But for my taste, I would easily trade these options for the extra power and sportier chassis. With the Sonata inline being only $650 cheaper than the limited trim, the decision is yours to make. Do you prefer luxury or performance? As far as the competition goes, the Sonata inline stacks up well against the Honda Accord 2.0T and the Toyota Camry TRD. The Accord has a better tuned chassis and the Camry has more power, but the inline is still faster than both, and I would imagine both would scramble to keep up with the inline on a long mountain road. The Kia K5 GT, which shares many of its parts with the Sonata, is likely the Sonata's closest competitor. As usual, the Sonata comes with a full suite of safety features like lane keep assist, cruise control with stop and go, and highway drive assist. Fuel economy is rated at a reasonable 27 miles per gallon combined, considering the amount of power this engine makes. Overall, I found the Sonata inline to be a fun car to drive, with a surprising amount of thrust while still providing all the comfort and practicality you would expect from a vehicle in this segment. So if you're looking for a performance-inspired front-wheel drive family sedan, the 2021 Hyundai Sonata N-Line should definitely be at the top of your list of vehicles to check out. Thanks again to Stivers Hyundai, and thank you for watching. 
If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. You can also find us on Instagram at RideXDrive.